coming at you with our virtual trade show, Art Glass. And I love Art Glass. It is so fun. It's unique. You can get creative. You have paint. You have colors. You have photos. There's a lot that goes into Art Glass, and we're keeping it simple for you today. So we have a special guest, and our guest, her name is Susan Hirsch. She's a glass artist, and I invited her in today. Um, she does a lot of... Um, uh, she does fine art, so she has a lot of her pieces that are held at a La uh, gallery in La Jolla, La Jolla, California. She also does um, private uh, commission work. She does public commission work. She has many of her pieces in uh, like hospitals, um, uh, hotels. So she's she's pretty good at her job, I should say. And I've had the honor of working with her a little bit, and she's kind of showed me how to do a few projects, which I absolutely love. So I'm new to Fuse Glass, but she's not. She's, she's an amazing artist. She was actually named one of the top 10 artists in San Diego County. And I met her, or we met her, Reyes met her at the Glass Craft and Bead Expo um, in Las Vegas. So let me bring on Susan Hirsch. Come on, Susan. Thank you for joining us today. Hi, great to be here. We'll keep our distance. Yes, social um, distancing. Great to be here. And um, I'm really happy to share the cool things that I get to do with the Raise This Photo Mask. Uh, when I first met them, I saw the photo mask. And because I studied um, etching in college, I was like, oh my gosh, this is like I can add this to fused glass. And it is going to be um, spectacular. And it, it actually has been really great. And I'm teaching some webinars. Yes. and. Uh, got lots of fun projects to show you. Uh, some of the projects are very simple. They're uh, one fusing, but a lot of them are two. So we're going to talk to you a little bit about um, using a kiln along with this. So it kind of just elevates or actually personalizes um, the kind of glass that you do. So we have here uh, just some this stuff. These items here are not fused. But these right. are just regular this glass is, items. This is the kind of stuff that you're probably familiar with doing. You know, candles, uh, glassware, uh, paperweights. And here we're using commercial blanks. So this is a blank that I've made with a um, postcard. And this is fun because I've done both sides. OK, so that's. So you can see, you can see that I've done um, a view of Paris on this side and then done the postcard. So it's just a real fun thing that you can actually so do. I love the stamp. You can do with, yep. um, photos. Say you've got a picture of uh, your brother and sister in uh, Paris. You could make them a personal postcard with that. I love to do wine glasses and things with whimsical um, themes. Uh, I do all of my own, um, make my own artwork. I use uh, Vector from uh, Adobe Stock primarily because they have such a great selection, like this little ornament. Just a Make simple wonderful ornament. Wonderful Christmas gifts. Here is a little turtle paperweight. And again, etching both sides just gives it some great 3D. You can use this one either way. I love how you etch on both sides. And you yeah. show the detail with the photo resist. And then you can just change your, you have some text on the front and then all of your, your detail on the back. Now, these were pictures that I just got off of Adobe and used the uh, rubber stamp tool in Photoshop. And then the other parts, the postcard, um, I got from um, Adobe Stock. There's lots of stock companies you can use. I just happen to like them because they have a huge variety and I don't have to spend forever working. Right. Then on something like this, I like to make sure that it has a three-dimensional, again, in the round feeling, which adds a lot. And we're going to show you in a little bit how I take the deer from one vector and the trees from another vector and combine them because uh, even though I'm using vector art, I'm personalizing it by making, um, making it my own. Right. Um, so we have, it. so this is, these are items that a lot of our customers are very familiar with. Um, glass, blanks, um, not fused glass, but just glass that's been etched with photoresist or vinyl. But today we're bringing in a new piece of equipment. So you have your blaster, you have your photoresist uh, mask making kit, now we are going to introduce a new piece of equipment to you to complete the rest of these items that we have on our table. And what is this? Well, this is a glass kiln. Um, there are glass and ceramic kilns. The glass kiln has a, um, a little computer or controller on it because glass needs to be um, 
programmed at several steps. Um, there are like basic firing schedules that we can provide for you. And what I do is I create my own blank, so to speak. That like the, the so the kiln yeah. will, in a sense, melt the glass yes. and so fuse the glass pieces together. So to make this blank, what I did was I cut three pieces and I'm stacking it because glass wants to fire to a quarter inch. So if we keep our projects to two to three layers, we're always going to get this nice, soft, rounded edge. So this piece right here of blank glass that we have here is actually became this in the kiln. That's right. So what we do is, in this case, I have a mold in here. I would put this on the bottom of the kiln with uh, some paper. We have to use a release paper. It's like in the oven, your glass will stick to the brick. So okay. we, we use a release paper and then a simple firing and I get this. And this is ready to uh, add the photo mask and etch. I love the gold and the black. You can get pretty really creative pretty. with color. This is iridized glass and this comes this way. So it's just something that I, a simple cutting and putting together, I just put the tape so it doesn't fall over. But uh, you just place them in the kiln and fire them and you'll get this beautiful blank. So you have the mold in there. Yep. So once you have your blank, you can shape, you can put it in the kiln again and to shape, and shape it. it. So a lot of these projects require two firings. One is to create the blank or to create the form uh, that you're going to work on. And then the second one is to shape it or to mature the enamel because the enamel is a high fire enamel and it needs to go up to a certain temperature to become permanent, but then it becomes completely permanent. So I know you use photo resist in between layers sometimes creating your designs. Yes. And that's the way it looks. And then you're using enamel. So I've been going through spray painting using the belt and molotov paints, the stone tone paints. You can use one shot paints. But today we're using enamels and they are powder enamels and yes. they're fusible. It's yes. like a fusible paint. So we're, this is would be my spray paint would right. be using enamels. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually um, put a mask on a piece and do the enamel so you can see the whole process. But first, we're going to show you some of the kind of fun things that we can make with this. So let's look here at these postcards that you have. OK, so these are what I call postcards uh, Postcards in glass. They're really fun. And I've got um, an assortment of masks that I made. This is the original that I'm going to work from. So I'm going to put the mask on the clear, and then I'm just going to set it on the white because, again, a quarter inch, two layers, makes the perfect um, rolled edge. So let me make sure we understand this, or that I even understand this correctly. We have our white glass that's fused glass. Now, you can't just use any glass Correct. in the kiln. You need to use fused glass. And you have to use compatible glass. So you're either using um, 90 or 96 COE. Um, you can fuse uh, enamel onto float glass, but you just need to know that there is a uh, compatibility that you have to be So aware we have of. our white backing, which is the back of this mm -hmm. postcard, and then you have your glass on top. So this is two layers, and yes. you have your glass. And then this is where you're doing, this clear glass is where you're doing a lot of the etching? Yes, I'm doing the etching on here and filling it in with the colored enamel, and then I'm just setting it on this in the kiln because I want it to fuse to that quarter inch. So this is a one fuse project. Some of these you can actually just do once, some or twice. So. Uh, it sh just shows all Such the a cute idea. variety of the fun stuff that you can do. So there's my mask. And just a fun little gift here that, uh, that taking some, uh, I love the cursive writing, some old letters, yeah, postcards. So here, here is our um, original. And you can see that I've grouped some of these things. Um, I just love the antiquity of some of these uh, images. This, again, was just um, vector art. So it's great all the resources that we have. Now this is unique. This is, um, I'm really excited about this. Okay, so then this is really interesting. I love antique letters and I just thought that um, making letters in glass would be really fun. So what I've done is I've taken this um, kind of vanilla colored glass and I've pre-fired it. And the reason I've pre-fired it is um, when you get this glass, it's very lumpy, and so I want it to be smooth, so I pre-fired it to get a nice, smooth texture. So when you say pre-fire, you're just putting it in the kiln yes. for a short period of time so it can become smooth? Yeah. Okay. So we're going to go up to like 1,400 degrees. That smooths it out, and then it gives me a beautiful working surface. Okay. Then I uh, would put my mask on it, 
Your photo mask. Photo mm -hmm. mask. Put the enamel in it and then just put it in the kiln. Now this but you is would sandblast it. You're going to sandblast to oh get well, your yeah. depth and then you put your enamel. You sandblast it to get the, um, <laughs> don't the texture. Don't put the photo resist in the kiln. Don't, yes, we no, don't want to do that. The photo resist does not work in the kiln. <laughs> anyway, the fun thing about this is um, I used a kind of a high firing schedule. So what I did was um, I just took the flat piece like Liz has here and laid it on the mold and went up to 1400 degrees and so it set the enamel and shaped it at the same time. So and it the, looks like it was folded. Yeah, it looks like it's folded. Just like um, the old antique letters. This one, I put the address on the back. And I love the little stamp. Yeah, we made that in a hot shop um, with some red glass and stamped it with a letter stamp because I love the, uh, I love the old wax seal that they did. So like I said, this would be start flat and then it becomes that great shape. So these are fun for, um, for if you have, say, uh, some of your grandpa or grandma's letters from World War uh, II, or if you have some antique letters that you would like to preserve and give as gifts to your family, it's super to um, scan these, uh, make the mask, and then everybody can have this beautiful little um, keepsake. Yeah. So what you don't know is that Susan actually has a lot of your um, documents or papers yes. from your family, like five generations, correct? Yes, my family had saved um, lots and lots of things. And so what we're going to demonstrate today when we get to that is um, my fifth great uncle uh, who was in the Union Army in the Civil War. And I've got his transportation papers and a photo of him in his uniform. So she actually has these in your possession right. and you're able to turn them into a stencil and to put that mark it into art glass and yeah. it becomes an amazing piece and of art that means the, something the nice to you. thing about this is some of those old documents are so fragile that um, in some cases I Photoshop and touch them up but that way we can pass those down for generation and generation and it's just really a wonderful way to keep the family archives so the so. next project we're going to talk about, uh, which is really fun, are wine bottles. <laughs> and what we've done is we have an actual mold uh, that is shaped uh, for the bottle to go in, which I didn't bring. And then what I do is I take some, um, some fiber and put it in the neck to keep it from collapsing. Uh, it's very similar to the paper that we put it on. That way I retain the shape of the... Um, neck of the bottle and I can put the cork back in. So which you is can really save, fun. save the cork um, so you can put it back in. Yeah. And I love the paint and the paint is not on the surface. So you can tell the paint is in the glass. Yeah, even though it's initially on the surface, it fuses right into the glass and this is then food safe. So we've got uh, Annette and Eugene's family winery here. So you can <laughs> personalize these as gifts. This one is uh, one of my favorites because I know that, you know, you have to keep opening bottles to keep yourself fit with wine aerobics, too. <laughs> <laughs> I love the little so, cork. So you can use it with, um, you know, for olives, cheese and crackers, or whatever. It's just makes or for a really client fun. has a special bottle that's that they, right. for like a special anniversary. Yes. That you can An save it. You can do a keepsake for them. And that makes a great gift. We have, sometimes you have gifts that um, you, you have a person you need to buy a gift for, and they have everything. They have everything, and what do you get them? And so this is where you have to think out of the box. You can get a little creative. Do something and unique. Do something unique, and you're recycling the wine bottle. Yeah. All right. So, and then we're going to uh, move on to uh, some other kinds of uh, gifts. Um, we actually have a um, picture of an award that I did on one of these plates. So you have a lot of people that will come to you because they don't want the traditional award. They Correct. have they had something. awards or they're retiring and they want something a little different, a decorative piece that they can display. So tell us about this piece here. So this is, um, this I took uh, the birds from a, a vector file and I just grouped them together so I could create this uh, feeling of it going from black to the gold. And this is that iridized glass that we just showed you in the kiln, which is also just like this one. Etch. So when we first um, etch it, it looks very gray because it's, um, it's sandblast. So then when we put it back in the kiln to form it into this shape, we take it up to a certain temperature where, uh, like 1165, and we get this beautiful matte finish. Now if I take it another 20, 30 degrees hotter and hold it, 
I'm going to get a gloss again. So you really have a lot of control over whether or not you want your piece to be glossy or matte. I love the gold look. But that makes a really pretty shape. And then on this, this one is just all fused. But what I do is I do sandblast the whole thing and then put it in the mold and go at that up to that lower temperature and get that beautiful, elegant matte finish. So uh, surface qualities uh, can really make a difference. So let's talk real quick. You have a mold here, putting yes. the glass in a mold, because I noticed that you have a really smooth finish here. And this is the natural yes. finish that you'll get when you do two layers. In a mold? In a mold. Okay. This one, I did three layers and I actually trimmed it so it's a sharp edge and that is a little more work. You're better off to just do the two layers where you get that really nice smooth edge. Because we want to keep it simple. We want to keep it simple for you so you can start experimenting two with Two layers, some photo resist, some cool designs, cutting your glass, getting, getting um, creative with color. And let's look at this one. Yeah. You did photo resist on this one now this, as well. Yes, this is a photo resist that um, I have here. I love all the patterns and things that um, you can find on um, the, with the stock art. So I take this and what this does is it revealed the black underneath coating of this iridized glass. Now then I wanted to leave a shiny strip so I taped over that and I sandblasted this so I get that matte look. So that way I have three different surfaces which looks very complex but it's quite easy like we showed you the blank that is in the kiln and that um, it's that simple. Just cutting the glass, fusing it, making your blank and then using your resist. I love that because you did a retirement uh, plate. Yes, I did a retirement uh, plate for the art museum okay. and uh, we've got a picture of that. I'm not sure if that was pulled up yet, but you can, you, 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 if you did see it, um, it was a great, uh, how big was that? It was about That was 24 inches. 24 that was inches. a really nice wow. size. Um, award here it is so that shows you the the awards you can do some beautiful uh kind of um keepsake kind of um things like this um the museum didn't want just a regular award they really wanted something a little more artistic and a little more special so it's really a, di a display item uh you know so it, it's really great to be able to do that kind of thing with your art glass so mm -hmm. let's this is where it gets really a little more complicated because you're dealing with photos yes now we're starting to work with the resist um, and doing the bitmaps, making photographs, which is really cool. So we've got two layer projects here, which are the simpler ones. This is uh, my Uncle Freddy, um, and it's uh, an easy two layer project. I made this for all of my cousins, uh, which is really nice. And then this one here is um, also a two layer project. So you wanna hand me this one? Yeah. Thank you. This so is this is the, the blank. I, t I call it the blank because you're familiar with blanks. So I put uh, two layers of glass together and then put cut pieces of that French vanilla just like uh, on the letters and fuse it. So I have a nice smooth surface to start with and then I'm going to put the mask on the blank and I end up with my pictures here. Now I've added a little text and some pocket watches these are actually pocket watches that I inherited. So you can take objects like uh, pins, eyeglasses, anything that you've inherited, take a snapshot and put it right in with your historical photos. So these are family. actually pocket watches that have been passed down and yeah. you have, and yeah. you just took a picture of them, put it, made a photo mask from that photo, and then you've engraved it into your, your art. Yeah, so in this case, this happens to be um, the way that I created a thick piece. And so I'm doing these in individual layers. Um, and I do that because when you um, use the photo mask, it creates uh, air pockets. And you have to get rid of the air pockets when you're gonna be layering. So I created the base first, fired it, and then I created this layer. I could create four, five, six layers more if um, you know, I wanted to do more on each layer. This mm -hmm. one is only blasted on the top layer, so it makes that much simpler. This one is a real simple project. So and again, and you're using the French vanilla uh, as like a letter, like right. a document, and right. this is an actual document from so this, one of your family. This yeah. is a document from um, 
1837. It is a, a, what we think might have been a wedding gift um, for my fifth great grandfather. And um, it was like a, a deed to a property. A deed. It was in three pieces, pretty battered, but I uh, photoshopped it together. Then I fused the uh, color on top to make it look like paper. So when you see the finished one that's like five layers, it looks like the paper is inside the glass. People say, how did you get the paper inside the glass? Inside the glass, right. But what's wonderful about this is now I could make these or some of these kind of pieces for other members of my family so everybody can share the pictures. Because usually in a family, somebody ends up with the album, not everybody, and it's really nice to be able to do this. And then my great-grandchildren right. will be able to see it when that deed has maybe disintegrated. I'm still going to have this wonderful keepsake. So. One thing, um, when we met Susan at the Glasscraft and Beat Expo, you started sending us your artwork to produce photo masks Correct. for you. She was doing a lot of testing um, with, with fused glass. And what she did was she would send us her print films and she would say, okay, make it into a positive and make it into a negative. And we're like, wait, 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 wait. No, 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 you just want it as negative. And she says, no, I'm doing something different. So we had to see what she was doing. So if you notice, this photo mask, it's a photo, but it's, this is um, a negative image, and this is a positive image. The positive image is right here on the black glass. Now tell us what you do when we, uh, when we give you the negative as a, a photo mask. Well, I like to have both because I don't know necessarily if I'm going to want to do it on a bright color or a dark color or if I'm going to want to do it light. So on this piece, for instance, I didn't use any enamel. This is just etched. And so what's great is black glass, if you're um, using the uh, positive mask, turns, into, um, turns it into this. So it looks really cool. And then here I've got my pocket watches. I also have the timeline of my grandparents, great-grandparents, great-great-grandparents, and some dates. So you can make some wonderful pieces. Now this could be slumped into this mold. It would fit to make a feature plate. But I chose to keep this one um, flat, right. but it just shows you that you can you can go uh, negative or positive. Um, so when on we the have mask. a light background, you will put I'll put the, the negative image, the negative mask, and then when I fill it with dark enamel, that fills all those light areas and turns it into to a positive. A positive. Okay. Again. So let's look and let's see what kind of questions we have. So bear with us just a moment, Susan. Let's take a look. Nancy, good. Thank you for joining us. Um, she, uh, I know that you signed up for some workshops for to take with Susan, and Susan's a very good teacher. She hosts a lot of classes. She actually has a lot of webinars. So we'll put up some information at the end of this segment that you can look at some of the webinars that she has coming up. Uh, let's see here. Um, okay, John Jackson. Hi, John. How are you? Thank you for joining us. Okay, he has a question. I'm curious what these sell for. Can you suggest a price range if a customer requests one of these single pieces? Very good question. Yes, well, it depends on how much work you put into it. If you're going to do a two-layer project, it isn't very complex. So I would charge, you know, maybe a couple hundred dollars. Because remember, this is custom. It's very special. You're taking their photographs. You're scanning it. You're doing Photoshop work, so there's a little bit of labor. Right. Uh, it's a little different than just putting a name, um, like or on dates. an award. On an award, yeah. Right. So, uh, and people, when they get these totally special custom family things, they are not. Uh, they don't tend to balk with the price point. Right. Now, when I do one of the thicker pieces, if it's a really yeah. big thing and it takes me a week or so, that might sell for as much as a thousand or fifteen hundred dollars. So it just depends. But what I like to do is I like to teach people how to do it themselves so it's not so costly. So you can come and take the two-day webinar or the two-day um, workshop with Resist, or you can do the webinar. And in the uh, Glass Art Magazine webinars, I show every single step. It's recorded, and then you can re-watch it over and over. So if you just needed help with the retouching, because I show how to retouch your photos, how to mend tears, right. things like that to make your photo perfect for bitmap. And also firing schedules. Because and see, the that's firing something schedules, I would not right. know. Put it in the put it in the kiln and and then what's the time, how long, what's the temperature. So you, do you have all that information yes. in your webinars? In the webinar you get lots of uh, different PDF files that you can download. It's got 
resources, where to find your enamels, right. where to buy your glass, um, kiln suggestions. It also talks about, gives you the firing schedules for the two layer pieces as well as the four to five layer pieces. And it's interesting because when you're working with glass, it makes a big difference on the thickness. It's like when you're cooking. If you're cooking a turkey and the thermometer on the inside says it's one temperature and the surface is another temperature, that will not work for glass. Glass okay. has to be the same temperature from the surface to the interior. So when you're working with one layer or two layers, you can imagine the difference in the temperature is not going to be that much. Right. But when you start working thick, you have to slow it down a lot. So your firing schedule might be a couple of days instead of overnight. When you're going real thick Yeah, pieces. when you're going thick. Yes. Because it has to uh, cool down okay. uh, at the same rate so the inside and outside is not. Well, but that's all explained in the firing schedules. Awesome. Thank you. And I d we do have another question here. Um, we have um, Helene. Hi, how are you? And she's a fused glass artist, and she does a lot of screen printing and enamels. She says, can you um, provide more detail than just screen printing uh, with this process, and how are you feeling with, uh, with the enamels? So we are going to get into that, aren't yes, we? Yes, we are. We're going to get into um, actually doing a quick etch and filling it in with the enamels uh, and cleaning it off. Okay. The nice thing about uh, the raises method above screen printing is you don't have to go through all the mess of, present of uh, preparing a screen. The screen uh, printing is an alternative but okay. very um, labor intensive. This is much simpler. Um, and uh, we have another one here. It said, that, of course, they missed us at the expo because it was uh, postponed. Um, it says, do you make your own resist or do you, you send them in for raises to make them? Okay, that's a great question because the first year that I worked with raises, I sent my images in uh, to have them make them. Okay. And then I decided, you know, I really should teach this. And if I'm going to teach it, I should know how <laughs> to do the process. So um, they've taught me how to do all the processes. Now I make all of my own films unless I'm doing a project where I'm doing maybe 50 glasses for a company or something, mm -hmm. then I send it to Raisist and they make it. Now, if you're just starting out or if you have something really special that you don't, they will make your masks. It's just more cost effective if you're making your own, if you're gonna make multiple projects. Multiple projects, there you go. And we can also do the photos if yes. you don't know how to do photos. Yes. Um, hi, Jim, I see you're joining us. I wanted to, I wore something special. I have um, this piece, it may be, uh, it looks familiar. This was a gift from a good friend, Jim, and he made this for me, and I love it. So to today, we're demonstrating art glass, so I made sure to wear my piece. It's a fused um, item here, and as you can tell, it's I believe it's dichroic yes. glass, and Standard. I love it. So we have, now we have, I think we have another question um, on some of what grit you use for blasting, okay, and what question. do you use, uh, I believe, what kind of sandblaster, air pressure, nozzle size? Okay, well, I use uh, the Razis cabinet. I have um, the... Um, yes, you have the 2034. 2034, oh, sorry, I can't remember the thing. And I keep uh, 150 grit um, aluminum oxide. Now, I have another cabinet, and I use 150 silica carbide. So it depends on the project, what I'm going to use. If I'm going to do a lot of deeper carving, the silica carbide carves much better. But when I'm doing something like this, Ancestry, I like to use the uh, aluminum oxide okay. because it's a little gentler, and uh, I'm not as likely to uh, remove any dots on my screen. All right. So, um, and you're blasting at 30, 35 pounds, yeah, I believe? Yeah, 30. Okay, uh, 30. 30 to 35 okay. for photos. Uh, if I'm going to uh, want to put a deeper finish or a pattern on something, then I'm going to crank it up to okay. um, like 40 or 50. And I got one more question before we get move on. Um, Erica, hi, how are you? Have you ever used rub and buff as a filler on etching? The colors are limited, but it works really well. Yes, you certainly can. It's just that rub and buff then would not be food safe if you're making plates. If you're just doing an award or something, you can actually use the paint right. after you finish if right. you like, if that's simpler for you. And yes, rub and buff does work, but you cannot fire uh, <laughs> rub and buff in the kiln. Okay. We, they do sell the gold metallic uh, and silver enamels. So if you want a metallic finish, um, we can recommend the enamels for that. And that's and also micas. Some people use micas, which is a little okay. different than that. 
So let's talk real quick here about what we have. And this is, this is for those that want to get a little advanced in using um, some powders. Yeah, we're, we're using glass powders in this. So here we have the slightly, um, I say simpler, but uh, the simpler because we're just using the enamels. Now when we move into the scenes, it's really fun to get a lot of definition. So what I've got is um, I've got a mold here. This is a patty gray mold, and it's great because I, uh, after I get past a quarter inch, if I were to just put it in the kiln and fuse it like this, it would run, and it would be twice this size. So to, um, we call it damming it, to dam it or to control the flow, we put it in a mold. So what I've done here, and this is in my newest webinar that's going to be um, featured um, with Glass Art Magazine in June, we do a background with a glass powder and sift that so that creates a beautiful base which we'll put in there and then we have multiple layers. This we've chosen to do a quarter inch glass because then it doesn't have to be trimmed. It um, comes out the perfect depth and then we will put uh, this layer next. And this is a little bit more complicated, so if you want to uh, do the webinar, it will talk about all the little details, like putting glass powder between the layers and capping it. But when it comes out of the mold, it looks just like this. So it does, does not require cold working. And so, cold working would be the polishing, yeah, the cutting of the edges. Yeah, cutting it with a saw or trimming it. And this comes up, it has a little bit of a texture on the edge, but it's beautiful to display because it has some rounded corners and you can set it on an easel like this. Now if you, um, once you get more involved, you can do a piece like this uh, in one of my workshops and I teach you how to use a saw and polish uh, with a grinder. But um, for today, for all of you that are new to art glass, um, we try to keep these, these to two layers. Now this, both of these projects are done in one firing. So what I do is I have the image put on clear glass. I'm going to show you that. It's just like um, the blank that we used for um, the postcard. So you start, and the telephone pole in the image would go on the clear glass, fill it with enamel, and then we would sift the glass powder to create this um, sky or ground or whatever you'd like, and then it's put in the kiln together. So this is one firing and you'll see you'll get this nice rounded edge. So it's a one shot thing. So some of these are, um, are really fun because you can do them just with the, the first firing. And they're not, um, they're not capped, meaning another piece of glass is not put on the top. So it's fired just like that. So. Great, great. So we have if you want to keep it simple, you can get creative with artwork, or you can do one to two layers, and like the letters, um, the recycled glass, and then the plates, and that's keeping it simple, or then adding uh, photos to your image. Yes, and, and Liz is going to demonstrate how to I make am. the mask that we're going to use today for the heritage. So she gave me a challenge today, guys. Um, this piece right here, some old photos, and if you notice, if you're used to making your own photos, usually this would be a negative but this is a positive. So we printed the, the photos out as a positive. And what do we have right down here oh, this, on this image? This image is, uh, I was fortunate to have uh, the transportation papers uh, from when my um, fourth great uncle was in the Civil War as a Union soldier. So it's from uh, US government. And that way I can make this keepsake that has his papers, him in his uniform. So you are blasting this today yes. on, on a fuse glass yes. and the photo. We're going to blast both of those today on a blank that I've already made. So I've pre-fused the layers and then we're going to show you how to apply the mask, blast, and fill it with the fusible and enamels. The and because it's white, because uh, it's yes, a white backing, we're going to put... Because it's a light background, we're using um, the positive instead of the negative. Okay, so I am going to make, I'm going to wash out this stencil because she's already provided the artwork for us. So now I'm going to take this positive here and we're going to make a stencil out of it. I'm using SR3000 3 mil. Okay. I'm taking a full sheet. I'm going to place the ink side down. So we're going to transfer this image over. And we're going to get all this great detail using photoresist film. 
Now we're going to place it on the cylinder. We're going to we're going to uh, wrap the blanket. Again, that blanket should be nice and tight. That's going to give you the best compression. We're going to expose this for 20 seconds. Let's talk about electrolyte unit real quick. You have a 15 watt UV bulb. That bulb will dim. It will wear over time. So you want to make sure if it's been a few years, replace the bulb. Um, you'll find when you're making a mask, if that bulb is starting to wear, that you'll start to your images will, n maybe you have to expose a little longer, it's time to get a new bulb. So it's, it's not necessarily that the bulb goes out, you just, it becomes where you need to replace it. So you want to keep an eye on how long you've had your bulb for. Cylinders can always be replaced if you want to take care of them, you want to make sure that um, you don't drop them, scratch them. Um, but the next important item to replace would be your blanket. So you want to make sure that when you have your electrolyte blanket, when you're, when you're producing stencils, that you have a gap here and that you have to stretch it to tighten it because that's giving you compression between the photoresist film and your artwork, giving you the best detail possible when it comes to your um, photoresist film, your images. I'm going to place the shiny side against this whiteboard. Okay, we're going to hook up our faucet here, our hose. And if you need an adapter, we do sell the adapter with the washout hose. So we're going to place this on here. All right. And we're going to wash with some hot water. Might take a minute here to get it warm, but I'm just going to go ahead and get started because this is a little bit of a tough piece here. So let's see where our image is. It's going to appear in just a moment. Because it's a positive, it can be a little challenging to produce this stencil, to know when to stop. And you notice I'm very close uh, to, to the mask with my nozzle. All right. We're starting to see our image. Now, I am going to focus on the bottom image here because this is the most challenging piece. I'm just going to focus on this area. This area right here is going to be the last to wash out. It's going to take the longest. I'm very close, just kind of working this image. And hopefully you guys can see that starting to appear. And I can tend to move a little fast. You want to slow it down. There we go. Starting, starting to wash. getting that image to wash out right over here in the corner. After I'm done washing this, I'm going to hold this up to the light so you can get a good idea so of how, what this looks like washed out. And it looks different because it's a negative image now. So we printed it as a positive and then we wash it out as a negative. Okay, we're going to go ahead and stop. Let's take a look here. I'm going to remove it off the, the board. Take our image. And let me hold it up to the light so you can get an idea of what that looks like. So it's a little different because I'm washing out a positive image. We didn't turn it into a negative. So I'm going to place this in our dryer. So I have this tool here. This is a great item here for you um, to speed up the drying process. You just place your, your mask shiny side down, turn it on, and it dries in about three to five minutes. 
So really handy when you're needing to get stencils done right away. We already did this piece earlier and it's all dry, ready to go. It has that nice tack to it. So once the mask is dry, it has a sticky side. That's the side that you're gonna place on your glass. So now we've already made these for Susan. So we're gonna, we're gonna step over to her area and she has already applied one. So I have already taken the uh, transportation papers and put them on the base. I had fired um, a slightly greenish mint colored glass because that's what the original looked like and I thought it would be nice to duplicate that. And then I have my picture here. Um, I'm going to separate it from the backing and then I'm going to put it on. This is a little chamois and what that does is it makes sure that it's nice and moist and then I'm going to place it right over this so it looks like it will look like an actual photo so it, yeah so it'll look like an actual photo the nice thing about the uh, photo mask is it's repositionable so if i don't get it absolutely perfect the first time and i see that i've made my image just a hair uh, taller so i'm going to end up taping that so i'm putting it on here i'm going to use my squeegee uh, to smooth it out and I have uh, crimped back one corner here so I can get a hold of the film and I'm going to hold that down and then I'm going to hold that <coughs> sometimes I'll use the squeegee a little more and walk it back real slowly now it's lifted but that's okay because I can pat it and get it to come down so nice and flat okay I got a little lift so I'm just going to roll it with my fingers like this just to smooth it back out. Nice. Okay. It's nice because these are pretty easy um, to manipulate. And then you can see that you've already kind of done this over here just on the clear glass. Yeah, I did a test one. I wanted to see what it was going to look like on the clear glass. You can see that with the enamel in it. So, um, and if I end up with a little wrinkle or something, it's kind of neat because it's a vintage photo. So it's going to look a little antique. So you don't have to get too concerned if you end up with a little spot or something. So now I'm gonna use my wire brush to um, perforate the surface. I've already done it to this. And now I'm gonna tape it up and we're gonna blast it. Okay. So. And you're using the vinyl tape? You like the vinyl yeah, tape? Yeah, I'm using the vinyl tape uh, because it is uh, nice and tough. And I've already, uh, if you can see here, I've already blasted um, his name. Now I'm going to put the tape here. I want to be a little careful uh, not to cover up part of this image. So I'm going to be a little careful. And here I'm just going to use the uh, regular masking tape because okay. uh, it's a little bit more forgiving. Okay, so make sure that if you have something like this that you cover it. Now if I don't cover it and I find that I've accidentally blasted the edges here, it's not a problem because if I wipe the enamel out, make it really clean, it completely disappears. It's like you're erasing it. So um, it's really not that big of a deal. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and... So we do have a question. So the, just to clarify, when we are blasting on dark glass, we are printing out the, the photo as a negative. Mm -hmm. Correct. That's <coughs> correct. Okay. And then when we're blasting on white glass, we are printing out the photo as a positive. When we're That's blasting right. on white, yes. That's right. It it's, can it, get confusing. It definitely can get confusing. I'm dyslexic, so I have to think about it twice. I have to think, well, let's see. You know, right, left, reverse, positive. But you do get used to it. So what you see on the uh, original or the transparency is what you're going to get. Because when you turn it into a mask, it suddenly becomes a negative. But that will revert back to a positive. So that's where... Like I said, it can get a little confusing, but <clears throat> that works really great. Okay, so I'm pretty much ready to blast. Now you can see I've got a little area in here. I'm not going to worry about it because I'm going to wipe that out with a Q-tip and it's not going to affect it. It's just a little harder to tape and so I'm not going to do that. So let me show this real quick too. Um, this right here is printed as a positive. So this is my print. When we produce the stencil, it becomes a negative. And on the white background, when she blasts a negative into a white background or a light colored background, 
and she adds the enamels, then it looks like the photograph. But if you were to blast it, if you were to print out a negative and then place it on a white background and you add the enamels, it would look like a negative photo. So, so if you're blasting on a white background, make sure you print it out as a positive and that will produce the negative photo mask. That's correct. Okay, so we've got it pretty much taped up here. We're going to take it over to the cabinet. Okay. And we're going to blast it. All right. And it looks like Billy's been at the cabinet because it's set for tall. Do you want to wear my shoes? <laughs> no, I don't want to wear your high heels. What I'm going to do is I'm going to lower the cabinet. This is really great because um, with this cabinet, it's completely adjustable. So if you've got somebody short like me, and then you have somebody tall that's going to use it next. It's great. So you can make the And do you want to wear gloves? And there's a choice of whether or not you can wear gloves. I think I will in this particular is instance. You don't have to, but um, if you have jewelry or if you just don't like the feel of the sand hitting your hand, um, it's all personal preference, you can wear the gloves. So we're going to put the gloves on. We're going to be... Uh, socially distancing with our piece here. So. And you go ahead and turn it on, the switch right up in the front. Okay. You are pressurized. Oop. Okay. All right. So now you can see in the cabinet, I've got my piece. I'm going to come in here with my hand. And you're, you're about um, a little, you're about 35 pounds. That's about right. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place it in here, and the first thing I do is I take it kind of like a pencil because I like to have some um, control over the direction. Uh, some people do this, and it's, it's not as good. So I'm going to aim it away because I'm always going to get this burst first. And as soon as it settles down, I'm going to pull it back, and I'm going to lightly dust because what I want to do is use the uh, pressure of the sand to set that mask down. So I'm gonna really lightly set it, come up here, make sure that I have him completely um, stuck to the glass. Now, once I have, um, have it started, I can go in a little closer, maybe six to eight inches, and I'm gonna do real, um, like lawnmower strokes, very slowly, and methodically uh, and usually with these kind of images with the bitmap I only have to do it two maybe three passes at the most so that's totally fine for that let's go down and get the certificate or the papers now I actually did this as a bitmap because I wanted to kind of see the detail uh, you could do this um, more as a vector but you can see here what I'm doing is I'm trying to go nice and slow to get an even etch I don't know if you are familiar with blasting but when you're waving it around it doesn't do a lot <laughs> you really want to go nice and slow and let that um, sand uh, and the pressure work for you now, because uh, the text on the transportation up here is a little bigger, I'm probably going to go over it another time. Because what I want to do is make sure that I have a little bit of shadow, a little depth to hold the enamel. Okay, so I'm going to come back up, make sure on those wider areas, I'm going to come back up and I'm just going to go over that heavier area again just to make sure that I've got a nice etch so I think we're probably really good with that um, the bitmap of course does not take as much etching as a big solid area so we are ready to go peel it and uh, enamel it and you can there is a blow gun in there a blow gun if you need a blow gun yeah so we do have a question. Uh, we have someone that took your class last year, I believe, at the Glasscraft and Beat Expo. And they had a question on what are some of your sand carving techniques to blast all the way through glass. OK, well, when you're blowing through glass, I would tend to use um, the heavier mask. And I can the, start to clean this for the you. The five mil. She can peel that for us, and then we'll show you. Um, the five mil and um, 
originally I put a piece of glass behind it thinking that the glass would be fragile, but it really wasn't. So uh, I just cranked it up to about uh, 60 pounds and just kept working it and it blows all the way through. <coughs> Excuse me, blows all the way through. And that is a really neat um, kind of technique that I like to use. I like to have the negative and positive uh, on that. Use when it comes to photoresist film. Okay, so if I'm going to do <coughs> bitmap images, I'm going to use the three mil because it gives you uh, more detail. If I'm going to go for a deeper etch, I'm going to use the four or five. Now, what I, I like to do <coughs> is I like to rinse um, the sand off of the glass before um, I use a razor blade. <coughs> now, I know if you're doing awards, then uh, things like that on blanks. You, Here's a razor. Got, you uh, don't want to use a razor blade because it's going to scratch. But it's a really, um, it's really kind of nice to have this um, because it'll it'll help you get the mask off. Now the mask is going to kind of soften anyway, but this is just going to make it a little faster. And besides, I wouldn't want to ruin my manicure <laughs> trying to get the mask <laughs> off, right? Okay, so. It's not going to hurt the bitmap image at all uh, for me to use. The you almost blade. can't see the photo on the white. You can't. Yeah, you really can't see the photo. It's going to completely appear um, when we go to put the enamel on it. Okay. <clears throat> so we have, uh, so we use the three mil for the photo resist film for the photos, and we're using the self stick uh, okay. SR3000. So now we're just and we will put up Susan's contact information um, to at the end, but we do have, I believe we have her name and her email. You can email her some questions, um, and you can see the, con uh, the contact, Susan the Hirsch at Gmail or firefusionstudio.com. And All she's right. very helpful. Okay, well, the great thing about this photo mask is it sticks, but as you can see, I do have to remove it. Okay, so now once I have my glass clean, um, we're going to go over, we're going to dry it, and we're going to put the enamel on it and show you um, how that works. All right. Okay. I can dry that for you. I have some water there for you in case you need it. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> so here I am with the, um, with the enamels now. Here you go. Um, I like to use um, either linen towels or microfiber towels when I'm working with glass. Uh, because it leaves less lint. So you can barely see the etching on the surface of that, but it's really going to pop up when we fill it with the enamel. So we're going to put it here, and I'm going to talk a little bit about the, um, the enamels and the materials I use. This is um, Easy Fuse uh, brand uh, enamel, and it is um, a high fire. So I can go up to like 1,500, and it won't burn out. Some of the enamels do burn out. Um, so I recommend the Easy Fuse by Fuse Master. Uh, it comes in a little envelope, which is kind of messy. So I put them in these bead jars, which is great for uh, being able to recycle. So it comes, lo looks like this, it's just powder. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take uh, and put a little bit of this, I already have some left over, into the black here. And I always wanna recap these because when I use the hairdryer, it's going to blow over. I'm using the Fuse Master Water Friendly Enamel. Um, the reason that I like this enamel is it wipes off easier. Some enamels are meant to stay on the glass, so cleaning it up in this process uh, is pretty difficult. And this uh, dilutes uh, four to one, so it goes a long way. Put it in a little squeeze bottle to make it easy so I can control the amount of liquid. I'm going to take a brush here. And I'm going to mix it up. Can you add too much liquid? Yes, you can make it too soupy. And uh, what you want is kind of, a, I guess, what you'd call a finger paint or tempera uh, consistency, because you want enough of the color in the enamel, but you don't want it to dry instantly. And for, um, for this purpose, I'm going to go ahead, and you can see how difficult it is to um, apply the, <laughs> the enamel. <laughs> you really are just right. wanting to mush it I, I call it mush it into the little divots. So it is important to have a little bit of a depth there so that the enamel can go down into that engraved area. Yeah, it's going to go right into the cracks. So it's kind of cool because 
again. Um, and the enamels come in lots of different colors. So if you, uh, you know, don't want to have to pre-mix them, you can buy these in about 20 some colors. I'm going to use black on the certificate and then I'm going to use kind of a brown and black um, on the photo because I'd like it to look more like a sepia, like the old fashioned um, photos. So now I'm going to put a little bit of um, that water friendly medium in here. Now I'm going to mix this. You could use a separate brush. Uh, it just depends on how fussy you want to be about your recycling. But what I want is kind of this dark um, sepia brown um, black enamel. So this is what I'm going to put on the photograph. So I just want to make sure that I get it on here and smear it right into those little bitty lines. And then um, I'm going to take the black. And I'm actually going to just do a little kind of dabbing because I kind of want it to, you know, have that kind of old feel. And then I'm going to put black in the text. Okay. And this. I can see how you can get creative with color. Yep. Now, what we're going to do is uh, once we've got everything covered, this also is going to help me blend because I overlapped the text here and this way you won't see, you know, um, so much difference between the two. So we're going to put that away and we're going to use the hair dryer because as you can see, this enamel has started to dry. It needs to be one color, very light, before you scrape it. So I use a hair dryer. I used to watch it dry and it was kind of boring. So. <laughs> I decided, you know, I should try a hair dryer. Or you can actually put this in your dryer if you're working on several pieces. I put it in your film dryer. Put it in your film dryer and, nice. um, and dry it real quickly. I wouldn't microwave it. Don't try that. <laughs> so what we're doing here is we're just trying to get all of this enamel dry. And as you can see, the color changes dramatically. So this is the same concept of using the doing the letter with just yeah. some text. Now you can see that when we scrape this, it's going to look very light, but this is a rich black and it doesn't mature until you fire it. So it'll be the same mission. We have a great turnout. Uh, we have people from all over. We have people from Canada. We have people from UK. Uh, we have someone joining us. It looks like I mean, I have, we have people from New York. We have Texas. Okay. Um, Russell, Ontario. Thank you for joining us. Uh, Maryland. Uh, New York. We have Arizona. And we are from Florida. So welcome. Thank you for um, for joining us. And we have Erica. You've been. Thank you for joining us. I know that you are a busy, busy woman, and uh, you have a great, great setup. I believe in Arizona. And okay, well, I'm ready to scrape. So looks uh, great. All right. If you want to pop back over here, what I've done is I've got a big tabloid piece of paper because this is very messy, and because the enamels are not super inexpensive, I want to recoup all the enamel. Now, I am going to end up with kind of a brownish gray, but mm -hmm. that's okay because that's a color I use a lot. Now, I take the razor blade and very, very firmly come across the piece. I like to have uh, the paper over here, so it's going to take all of the excess residue. Now I can really see that green, the green tint yeah, see, glass. Yeah, I, I, uh, I did a green glass underneath for the certificate. And here, let's do. Um, so, where can you buy fused glass? Okay, there's a there are a lot of shops that sell um, the different types of fused glass. Um, usually, there's one in your town, um, and they generally carry these fusible enamels as well. So, what we're going to do is just I'm just going to turn it around so I keep my mess kind of in one spot. Then I'm going to come in and get these edges. I'll show you how to do that. <coughs> So for fused glass, I know we have, um, locally, we have Oceanside Glass Tile. Yes, Oceanside Glass Tile is a great resource. And their um, glass is um, machine rolled, so it's smooth, so you don't have to pre-fire it. 
And then you have bullseye glass up yes. north from us. Bullseye, uh, theirs, their glass is hand rolled. So like on the French vanilla I used for the um, letters, I did have to pre-fuse it to get it nice and flat. Then you have companies like um, DNL Art Glass. They have they carry a wide range of different um, products for fused glass. You have uh, Delphi Glass um, in Michigan. So you have you have a lot of suppliers that you can purchase fused glass. And I'm I'm assuming the enamels as well as some of the the um, items that you use. I believe it was like a fiber that you used for the cork. Yes. Yeah, all those kind of things generally you can get. I set this aside because what I want to do is I want to clean up my mess. I'm just going to put this back in the black. And you can see how much of the enamel you get back. It's amazing how little wow. enamel it actually takes. And there you can see that I'm going to recover it. Um, if this dries up and looks kind of like a watercolor uh, paste, that's fine. You just add the water-friendly enamel and um, it'll come back. Okay. okay, so now I'm going to do a little bit more cleanup. I like to use a rubber squeegee. I've got some other tools that work really well for excess. Believe it or not, I buy <laughs> these little makeup sponges, and they're fabulous. I used to just use Q-tips, but these are real fine, and they make it pretty easy. So you can see that this is going to help remove that excess enamel really well. The other thing is a rubber squeegee can nice. also work really well. Now I got a little bit of a streak here, but that's cool because it's just gonna look old fashioned. So. Very nice. So what's gonna take the most time is just your little bit of cleanup here. So cleaning up your edges. Now you don't wanna use a towel or um, a brush on top of your enamels or you're gonna wipe it out of the edges. So you have to take your time um, for the cleanup. This is probably the most tedious. Yes, this is the most tedious part. It's just, you know, kind of like cleaning out the enamel. But then once I get done, I can use the scraper. That'll take off that little bit of excess. And then I'm going to end up with a beautiful image. Here I'm going to come in a crust with the sponge and take up, again, a little bit of that excess. Um, I could use a Q-tip with a little bit of water if I have some left like down here in the middle. I have some frosting, so. But rather than uh, make you suffer and watch um, the entire cleanup, here. I'm just gonna show this to you. So, but you can see, now this image is rather soft, um, like this, but it's going to get a lot darker, and that's got a beautiful sepia color, and then you can see all of the um, detail on his name and the date. And so that. you would put this back in the kiln? Yeah, so this is going to go back in the kiln once I get it clean and take it up to um, 1400 degrees and that's going to set everything. So we have this kiln here and it's a 110 volt and that was something that was really important to me to introduce to our customers is a kiln that is yeah, this easy is actually, to connect. There's a lot of brands of kiln. This is Crest. It just happens that this is the largest kiln that will run off of your household power. And I can get three or four projects, depending on the size, in this kiln and just um, use it at home. Um, the bigger kilns take uh, 240, so they require a special power. So this particular Crest kiln is a great, um, a great kiln for a starter kiln for you. And if someone has questions, they can certainly contact That's you. That's right. And you have her contact information. Let's take a look at our questions here to see if we have any more uh, questions before we wrap up. I can't believe it's already been an hour. Yep. The time goes by so fast. Um, we have a big thank you. We have a hello from Bob from Oregon. Hi, Bob. Uh, we have Baja, Mexico. Michael, thank you for joining us. Uh, Baja, po um, Poland. Very nice. Amazing. Thank you. Uh, and Egypt. Egypt? Wow. Great. See, so you're we're, we're teaching all over, yeah, or you're it's, teaching it's today great. all over the and world. The nice thing about uh, this this is that you can do it at home. You can do it in your studio. Uh, it's not that complicated. Uh, I think when people think about glass, they think, "Oh, this is so complicated, I can't do it." But you can see just by simply cutting the pieces of glass, laying them on, and fusing them to create that base. Um, yeah, we get a, a beautiful custom piece. So. It just is going to expand your market if you're uh, 
trying to provide things for your customers, like for sports teams, um, That's birthdays, right, with the plates, right? with anniversaries, the plates. Yep. any kind of thing that you really want to do something super, uh, super personalized um, and unique uh, that somebody can't just buy at um, the award shop you've got something here that's really special and also wonderful to be able to pass down to well, you. We thank you for joining us. And I know she's featured in Glass Art. Um, her webinars are um, through Glass Art Magazine. You're, we're gonna call for that so you can see that information up. But she's a great teacher. She has a lot of information. Um, reach out to her if you have some questions and she'll help you out. But you, you can go to the glassartmagazine.com and then you can go under expert webinar and she has some great webinars coming up. If you want more information on this whole process, you can keep it simple or you can go advanced with some of these multi-layer projects with the glass powders and, and different things yes. like that. And the nice thing about the, uh, the webinars is once you've got your link, you can watch it over and over. So if I just need refresher on the Photoshop, because I go into retouching, um, fixing cracks, uh, lightening and darkening, um, all kinds of things that you're going to need to know to, um, to do this process. So um, it's great. You can watch it over and over. Um, I would highly recommend that. Um, but if you want the full experience, you can always come to San Diego and take the two-day workshop here with Resist, yep. with uh, Liz and Billy, and we make a four-layer um, large project. Yes. I got to do one, and um, I love my project. I, I tre treasure that one. That one's a neat one. Yeah. Uh, well, we thank you for joining us. Visit Raises.com to get your photo resist film, get your dryer, get your tools for this whole process. We thank you for joining us. See, stay tuned next week, Tuesday, 10 o'clock. We've got a great session planned for you. We're working hard to bring you fresh new ideas for your business. We want you to be successful. Raise This is family owned and operated, and we want you to be successful, um, especially during this time. We know how hard it is. So we're gonna equip ourselves, we're gonna, we're gonna train up ourselves, and we're gonna push forward here, and um, we're, gonna, we're gonna set the world on fire, making some money, making some art projects now. Thank you, Susan, for joining us. We'll see you soon.